Okay, welcome back guys. We're gonna see a problem about a cycle. In this case, we're gonna take on refrigeration cycles. Refrigeration cycle, okay? There are mainly two refrigeration cycles. The one that consists of a compression of a vapor, okay? And the one that has to do with absorption. That's called the absorption cycle. Uh, the absorption cycle, it's a little bit um, uncommon. Uh, so we're gonna take uh, our lead on the compression vapor, okay? So compression of a vapor. And you will see why this cycle has this name. Okay, so let's just see what I mean by compression vapor. You need to take a compressor, okay? So there is a compressor here. It goes in here at one, and then it goes out at two, yeah, and then, comes to a heat exchanger. This heat exchanger provides the outlet of heat. So I'm gonna put QH. H is because of high. So what I mean by this is that the heat is going from, a, from this condenser into a high temperature reservoir, which most of the time is the environment. Okay, so at the back of your refrigerator, refrigerator, you will find maybe some piping. There's a piping that goes around, uh, that snaked around at the back of the refrigerator, and that thing will feel warm. Okay, so that warm that you're feeling over there has to do with this heat being released by the machine. Okay, so that wa that was is the QH. I need to tell you that the compressor receives uh, work for the compressor. So, so far you have two machines, compressor and a heat exchanger. The name is condenser. In this case, this thing is condenser because there's the condensation of the refrigerant going inside this cycle. Then you will find out about a valve. Okay, so here at the entrance of the valve, it's a 0.3 and at the outlet of the valve, of course, it's 0.4. Okay, so this thing is a valve. Let me just put it here, the valve. Okay, if you want more hints, this one is a compressor. And then you will find another, just to complete the circuit, you will find another heat exchanger, which is called the evaporator. The evaporator, where the refrigerant will evaporate, okay? So you have completed the circuit. Inside, you will use a substance called refrigerant 134A. Okay, that's the name of it. This is the way the refrigerants are named. It has to do with the amount of hydrogens and fluors and carbons that has the molecule because these are complex molecules. Okay, so these are complex compounds. And therefore, they are named like this because otherwise the the names are kind of long names, okay? So it's better to remember with this symbology. Okay, so here at the evaporator, you will take heat from your food. That's the whole purpose of the uh, refrigerator, to steal heat from anything that you're putting inside the box, which is a refrigerator, okay? You are putting, uh, you are taking them heat out, okay? So those things will remain cold, okay? And there won't be any growth of bacteria that can damage. Uh, well, there's gonna be growth of bacteria, okay? But maybe it will last a week instead of just one or two days if you put it outside of the refrigerator. That's the whole idea of a refrigerator at home, okay? Well, okay, so you had that. And you have here the cycle. Now, let me just try to illustrate this with a diagram so you may understand what is happening here before going into the, uh, into the problem. Okay, so you will have, let me just put here the pressure and this one, let me just put this one, what should I put? Okay, enthalpy. Why, why did I doubt or why did I hesitate about putting this axis, pressure and enthalpy? Well, basically because you can put anything you want, okay? Um, in the sense of properties, you can put pressure, enthalpy, pressure, entropy, temperature, entropy or something. Most of the times, this is the one that you use in order to illustrate what is happening. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the ideal, ideal refrigeration compression vapor cycle. 
So I'm just going to summarize by saying the ideal cycle. Because if you got yourself with a real cycle, you will see some differences, okay? Differences that has to do with maybe the machines are a little bit imperfect, okay? So, but now in this one, I will start here, this saturated steam, then I will compress it. So you see that this one would be two, okay? Most of the time, if it's an ideal cycle, this guy means that the entropy remains the same inside the compressor. Then you go yourself to 2S. Let me just emphasize that this 2S is the isentropic state out of the compressor. Then you will place this inside uh, a heat exchanger and heat exchangers tend to be, okay, so I'm gonna put three equals to P2, okay? So this one is gonna be three, it's located right here at saturated liquid and the process between two and three, okay, it's isobarical because mainly uh, heat exchangers tend to do that generally speaking, okay. In reality, they are not completely or strictly isobarical, but you can actually model at first like that. Then it comes a valve after three, it goes into a valve and what it does, okay, it does this. So it depressurizes, it takes out the pressure, it reduces the pressure from three to four, and it does it at the same enthalpy. That's why I have a vertical line from three to four, because the process is isenthalpic, okay? How do you know this? Well, that's how most of these valves work. It doesn't mean that they necessarily do it all the time in reality, but, um, but you can model it like this. Now let's go for four to one in the heat exchanger. So again, let me just try to, you already know this drill. Okay, so here is the heat QH. Here is the QL going into the cycle, going out of the food, but going into the cycle or the refrigerant. Okay, so this one is QL. And this one over here, let me just put it with, so you will have here the input of work. Okay. Okay. So we're going to solve a problem. Let's just see example. Let's just do example. And within this example, I will tell you something about the indicators of this, of this uh, refrigeration cycle. Okay. So the example says like this, let's just put data. Okay. Let's just put the data of this stuff and which would be the temperature from the evaporator. It's minus 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that's what it is. The temperature of the condenser of the condenser is um, 39.37 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I think I'm right. Um, the mass flow, mass flow rate is 0.6 kilograms per second. There's not a lot of refrigerant going inside your refrigerator. Okay. Um, so fine. It says fine A. Um, QL. So QL is a uh, heat power that you are taking from the food. This is actually the refrigeration rate. Okay. This is actually the, you could say that is the, one of the most important things. Otherwise, why would you buy a refrigerator? Now B, uh, you need to get the cup. Okay. So you're going to get the cup. And C, cup, I will talk about what the hell is a cup. C is an indicator of how much work going into the compressor you need in order to produce a ton of refrigeration. Ton of refrigeration. Okay, so this is a little bit weird. This is just language from refrigerators. Okay, I will try to explain it as I go in, into, the, um, into the example, but do not worry too much. This is not that difficult. Okay, so, um, and uh, what I would do, and yeah, I want to explain something else. This is D. So the, it says, get the cup. I, I have not told you what the hell is a cup, but get the cup if this refrigerator would work, okay, as a heat pump. And I will try to explain you the difference a little bit in this, in this one. Okay, but you should go to your textbooks and see what is the difference between a refrigerator or a heat pump, okay? So 
in this case I mean by a heat pump. Do not get confused with this, which is horsepower. Sorry, I didn't make up this nomenclature or these symbols, but this HP and this HP are different, okay? Now, let's just go and do the problem. Um, okay, so the ideal cycle, uh, let's just put it here. The ideal cycle, ideal cycle means that I'm gonna need some data, right? Oh my God, you're so, you're a genius, yeah, I know. So one, 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 let's just see how I can find one. It's um, oh, just saturated steam because you are located right here at the line of the saturation curve. So saturated steam and you have the temperature. You don't know it, but you have it because it's the temperature of the evaporator. So the temperature of the evaporator is actually minus 20 degrees Celsius. If you go to your R one, three, four, a tables, okay, you can go here and find how much. So H1 would be Hg at minus 20 degrees Celsius. And you will find yourself that H1 equals to 238.41 kilojoules kilogram. And also you need to find this guy. I will tell you why in a little bit, but this is the entropy at those same conditions, which is 0 0.945 and 64 kilojoules, kilogram Kelvin. Okay, so you have find everything you need about one. Let's just go to, with two. So I'm gonna put here two. So for two, you are here. It seems that you are in a superheated steam, right? It seems that you're here. So let me just see what do I have. Look guys, I don't have too much, at least here. I don't know what the hell I am. I think I, for one, I have the temperature of the evaporator because it doesn't change. How do you know that? Well, because I can go to my textbook, I'll read a little bit about the theory of this ideal cycle for refrigeration, and you will find out that um, the temperature of the evaporator here doesn't change because it sticks here, okay, at four, then it passes, it gains heat, but not temperature, so the temperature is the same one here inside the saturation curve because it happens to be at the same pressure. So if the pressure doesn't change and you are inside the saturation curve, the temperature shouldn't change, okay? So that's how I know that this temperature evaporator, whether it's T1, this is, I can say this, T1 equals to T4. I actually can say this, that this is the evaporation temperature. Okay. So now at two, I know that, oh my God, I know that S1 equals to S2. Yes, I know that because it's the ideal cycle. Therefore, uh, so I know this, 0 0.94, 564, but I don't have anything else to work with. So it seems like you are a little bit uh, lost, right? Well, let me just go here and say, okay, now let's just go to three. Let's just go to three. Hey, what happened to two? I'm gonna do it later. Hopefully I can take you there. So for three, you know, you have saturated liquid. Okay, so you have saturated liquid and you also have, oh, 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 oh you don't have, uh, you don't, okay. So now you need to start using your other data, which is now temperature of the condenser. Okay, so temperature of the condenser, this is not a very good established data. Temperature of the condenser is, 39.37 degrees Celsius, okay? So I think this is, um, well, it's not a mistake in part of the example, but it's something hidden here because look guys, the condenser is between three and two, right? Here lies the condenser. And I am saying, I'm assuming that the at the outlet of the condenser, you will have the temperature of the condenser uh, as my data. But you could also argue, hey buddy, why didn't you use two, okay, here? Why not temperature of the condenser of the condenser here, okay? Why not use this one? And if you do that, you will be wrong. And, and yeah, that's the problem with this type of data. They are not telling you the whole story. So you cannot use this one, maybe because of this. Here you are at a superheated steam. So this temperature T2 won't be the same one as this one, because if you are in superheated, okay, at the same pressure, 
you have the same pressure. I don't know if you see this, but P3 equals to P2. That was established before. That was established already here. So P3 equals to P2, right? But the temperature is not the same one because you are not inside of the uh, saturation curve as you were here from 4 to 1. Okay, from 4 to 1, you were inside the saturation curve. Therefore, you can assume if it's the same pressure, it should be the same temperature. It's called saturation temperature, but not here, just because of looking at this diagram. So the only thing that, I, that now you know that you can use, okay, so let's just go here. So maybe I can find here the pressure for the condenser, because if I know the saturated liquid, that it's in saturated liquid conditions. And I know the temperature at the outlet. So let me just establish this as putting t these guys T3, okay, at the outlet of the condenser. There, therefore, you can actually find the pressure at the condenser. If you go to your table, you find out that this guy is located right at one megapascal of the pressure of the condenser. Therefore, now what I can establish at two is that, uh, okay, so P2 equals to P3, this is for real. Okay, this is actually the, something that I can know. I know that the pressure is the same. I wasn't sure about the temperature, but I was sure about the pressure. So in this case, a thousand kilopascals. And now with these two guys, you will be able to get the pressure. Uh, I'm sorry, everything you need at two. Let me just uh, finish three. Okay, so I'm going to finish three. And with these two guys, I'm able to find H3 equals to A, HF at a thousand kilopascals if you like, or maybe you would like HF at 39.37 degrees Celsius. And this is the same thing, okay? So H3 is equal to uh, 107.32 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so you have found yourself the enthalpy. Let's go back to two. And for two, now you can actually solve it because you have two data here. You have the entropy and you have the pressure. Therefore, with these two guys, you need to decide, decide, well, the problem is gonna give you this. So at pressure two, at pressure two, which is a thousand kilopascals, you need to figure out where the hell you are here. What do you mean? Maybe you are superheated, right? I, I, I'm thinking you're superheated. Okay, but you can prove that. You can actually prove that you are in superheated. How so? Well, you go to SF, the saturated liquid, the entropy of saturated liquid at this pressure, the saturated steam at this pressure, and you will find out that this, that this guy is actually lying here in superheated as we assumed. Okay, so then you go to superheated. How do you go to superheated? You will go to your table of superheated refrigerant. Remember, this is not H2O. And at P2 equals to 1,000 kilopascals, or whether it says one megapascals, you will find out, you will find out something you will find out that um, there's this tablet of, of pressure and the other information that you have is the entropy. And you will find that you have 0.9179 and that you have 0.95 in your tables, okay? So I'm writing what I have in the tables, 0.95. And here, here, but you don't have this fella. You would like to see this fella in the table, but you don't have it. Therefore, your actual value is lying here in the middle, okay? You, this is for the column for the entropies, but you also have a column for enthalpies. So for this one, you will find out that you have two, um, sorry, 271.71 and you have 282.74, okay? So this is the value that you're looking for. This is your H2, H2 that you're looking for. Okay, so you will place here 0.94, five, six, four, and you will interpolate. Let me just put the interpolation formula so you cannot, so you don't waste time doing the, uh, the straight line, okay? Because interpolation is actually doing on a straight line. So H2 minus 271.71 and divided by 282.74 minus 271.71 equals to 0.94564. Uh, minus 0.9179, and everything's going to be divided by 0.9525, okay, minus 0.9179. Okay, so good. Now, with this, H2 is actually 
280.553 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so it's just, uh, you know, it's just, uh, oh my God, I need to do this interpolation, but it's not difficult. It's maybe more bothersome, but it's not difficult. So H2, you already have it. You have H3. We're just missing 4, 4, okay? So 4, 4, this is really simple. I have a bulb in the middle of 3 and 4. Therefore, H3 equals to H4. How do you know that? Because it's a bulb. And bulb, the, um, this, these bulbs, they do these things isentalpically. Is Okay, most of the time. So in that sense, well, H4, let me just put it, H4 is 17.32 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so everything that I have placed here is just steam tables, refrigerant steam tables. You should be able to get the enthalpies. That, that is a, the thing that will help you out to get all this stuff, okay? So I'm gonna do one more thing regarding steam tables that is not, they are not asking to do this in the problem. Nonetheless, I could ask you to do this in, uh, you know, in a test or something, or they could ask you to, to, to get something, okay? Because this thing was too simple, because it was, okay. So now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna tell you how to get the quality, the quality of 0.4, which is this point here. So, According to this diagram, this point four should be mixture, right? Should be right in the mixture. Therefore, I'm gonna get myself the quality just to, okay, just as a, as a funny uh, side of this uh, of this whole story, okay? Um, so therefore, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it one seven point thirty two, okay, minus minus twenty five point forty nine divided by two hundred and twelve. 0.91. Okay, how the hell did you get to this place? Well, maybe you detect that this one, right? This guy, it's actually, so you know what I have put here. This is HF at the conditions of four, which are the conditions of four? Well, okay, so I can put them here if you want at temperature of the evaporator. Oh yeah, I have that, yeah, are at minus 20 degrees Celsius. And this guy that you see here should be HFG at minus 20 degrees Celsius. How do you know that? Well, I know that I have minus 20 degrees Celsius, or maybe you can, you wanna use the pressure. You can also use the pressure, the low pressure here. Uh, oh, but I don't have it, but you can get it, right? We, we didn't use it, but you can actually get it. This one, P4 equals to P1 should be saturation pressure at the conditions of temperature of the evaporator. So it shouldn't be that hard to get it, okay? Well, okay, um, remember the enthalpy is the same one, but not the pressure. P3 is not equal to P4, okay? So that's how I got this quality. Therefore, X4, X4 equals to 0.384. Okay, so you are actually closer to the saturated liquid than to the saturated steam. Nonetheless, you can have this stuff. And when you go to refrigeration and you look for the uh, um, uh, Joule Thompson coefficient, there's something that it's been used in refrigeration uh, theory. Okay, so you can actually find something more about this stuff. I'm just guiding you through there. Fine, you already have whatever you need in order to get all the calculations done. Let's just try to finish the problem. So I'm gonna place it here. Maybe I can do it. Maybe I'm not going to make a mess of this. So for the, um, let's just see, in the evaporator, for the evaporator, you will have this. This is the evaporator, here it goes four. It goes out one. And remember that you have some heat going in and this heat is called QL, okay, so QL. Therefore, therefore, let me just stick with the purple one. So you can do actually this, zero equals to M4H4 minus M1H1 plus QL, 
Okay, so I'm gonna get myself explicitly a QL. So QL equals to M. Remember, I'm gonna pass this guy, I'm gonna change the sign to everybody. So M, which is M1 or three or four or two or whatever, because it's the same one. Um, so M equals to H1 minus H4. This is the heat rate that I'm taking out from the food. So if you do your calculations, remember we have everything we need, okay? This from the steam tables and this was for data, which is 0.6 kilograms per second. Therefore QL is actually, um, what I have here is 78.654 kilowatts. This is what I have. You can check it out and place it in the comment section. Okay, so QL, uh, it is like this. And what I'm going to do uh, right now is I'm going to change it. I'm also going to express this in HP horsepower. So by doing that, if you remember, so what I have here is that one HP, one HP equals to 0 0.746. This is what I remember it is, okay? So maybe it could change, but do not crossify me. Okay, so I th I'm thinking I have, uh, well, I think I remember this well, but I don't know, you could tell me. So with this unit conversion, I can get to a point that I know that QL equals to, oh my God, where do I have it? Do I have it somewhere? Or should I put it in some other place? Wait a little bit. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot because this one, QL, doesn't come from any machine that produces work. Okay, so sorry, my bad. I'm gonna use that later for the compressor, but not not right now. I was you know all, all over the place. But what I can do, yeah. But I, what I can do is this. Oh my God, I, I, you're gonna do another mistake. Oh, hopefully not. So what I'm going to do. This is the heat that I just took from the from the food. Okay. Um, there's a there's a conversion there's a conversion for this one and I'm gonna need it in order to solve one of the um, the things that they are asking me in the problem. So this is the heat rate in kilowatt, but there is specifically for the language of refrigerators one thing that is called a refrigeration ton, okay, a ton of refrigeration that has a meaning. Um, it's this one ton of refrigeration or refrigeration ton, okay, equals, if I'm not mistaken, equals to 3.5, 3.516 5, kilowatt. And I'm going to need it to solve one of the things that they are asking me, which is the indicator of horsepower divided by ton, refrigeration ton. Okay, so with this, I can now pass this heat rate that I got, so QL, is gonna be equal to 22.37 refrigeration tons, okay? Okay, so I have that. So QL is equals to this. Why are you doing this? Well, if I if it was uh, only about me, I could I could just have put this 78 and that's it. But they are asking me to put this place in some other units. These some other units are called ton of ref or of refrigeration, which is actually it's actually a measurement of how much heat you need to take out from a ton of water in order to produce a ton of ice. That's what a ton of refrigeration mean, if I'm not mistaken. So it's actually the heat that you need to take out from one ton of water in order to produce one ton of ice. It's basically the latent heat that you're taking out of that body of a thousand kilograms. Okay, so you already have this QL, okay, got it. Now let's just go and see about some other stuff. I'm gonna go for the compressor. So for the compressor, for the compressor, compressor, what I have here, I'm going to do, uh, oh, I don't know if I was, if, if it was like this, it was this way or the other way around, this trapezoid, I, I don't actually care. So this one is one, okay, and this one is, okay, this one is two, and I'm going to do, oh, you know, you have the work going in. So this is your first law. This is M1 going in. H1 minus M2, H2 going out, uh, plus the work produced, I'm sorry, uh, delivered to the compressor. So the work is actually 
M, remember, M1 and M2 is just M, and I'm gonna pass this guy over here, change the sign, therefore this guy is gonna be H2 was negative, now it's a positive, minus H1. Okay, so with this, you already have everything set into place, so the work produced, um, so again, it's not produced, it's not a turbine. The work received by the compressor is gonna be 25, 25.3 kilowatts. And in this case, yes, I'm gonna pass it to horsepower. So again, I'm gonna put again, one HP, one HP, oops, equals to uh, 0.746 kilowatt. Okay, I think you can find it as 0.75 or, or, or something. So hopefully I'm not very off from this value. And therefore with this, the work received by the compressor, now I told, uh, now I said it right, was the received by the compressor is actually 3.91 3 HPs, horsepowers. With this, I'm gonna put out of the way this thing that they are asking me, this C here. So for C, okay, so for C, I think I, I have everything into place. It's how much horsepower I need to deliver to the system in order to produce one ton of refrigeration, okay? So I'm, I'm just gonna do this, 33.91 3 HP divided by the tons of refrigeration, which was 22 point, oh my God, 22.37 refrigeration tons or tons of refrigeration. And therefore you will have yourself, so again, HP divided by ton ref <laughs> equals to, what I have here is 1.516. So for every thousand kilograms of water that you wanna produce into ice, you need to deliver according to these conditions, you need to deliver to the compressor 1.516 horsepowers, okay? That's the, that's the idea of this indicator. Uh, it doesn't mean that you are actually producing, you know, uh, ice, okay? This just means it's, uh, it's a matter of talking about the heat rate that you are taking out of the food, okay? It's not that you are actually producing ice. I mean, you could, but it's not the, uh, the idea. You can actually just refrigerate them by taking out heat, okay? So, um, um, yeah, you already have C, and, but they are asking you some other things. So let's just go here. Also, QL. Okay, so QL, got it. This one is A, or maybe this one was your favorite. So you already have A. What else they are asking me? So the cup. The cup, okay, so the cup, it's coefficient of performance. Of performance. This actually, um, this actually um, an efficiency, okay? The coefficient of performance, it's the efficiency for refrigerators or heat pumps that I will see later, okay? Okay, so in this case, remember, an efficiency could be, generally speaking, defi be defined as useful effect divided by resource. So in this case, for ref your refrigerator, the useful effect, maybe you catch that, is the heat that you're taking out of the uh, food, okay? That's important. That's, the, that's why you are buying a refrigerator. Divided by the resource, okay? So if you don't feed your compressor, it won't happen anything. Therefore, that's the basic idea, okay? So now you have a definition for the cup, okay? They do not call it efficiency in my opinion, because these values of efficiency goes farther than one. So a typical refrigerator will have, I don't know, a two cup, a three. Oh, but you mean percent? No, I mean 200% or 300% or 400%. It's a little bit off, or it's a little bit confusing, but when, because when you are looking for uh, power cycles, the efficiency of power cycles uh, are going from zero to one. So when you go th through uh, refrigeration, you will find out that this also, this is an efficiency, and this guy will be farther than one, uh, 100%. I mean, a refrigerator that has a cup of one, it's a louse refrigerator. You're actually looking for, I don't know, three, four or something, you know, to say, well, this one is a really good refrigerator. 
uh, why why it, it it is farther than one just because of the definition you are defining in some other thing in some other way the the efficiency and I will tell you at the end of the problem because they are asking us something about a heat pump so the definition of the cup for a heat pump is different than the definition of cup for our refrigerator so it will change so do not get freaked out freak out by the values of these efficiencies okay you are not violating any physical law it's just the way that you are defining efficiency Okay, so with this in mind, QL, you already have it. Okay, so what I'm gonna put here is, um, what I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, which is, where do I have it? Oh my sweet God, I don't have it here. So, oh my God. Really, I don't, I do not have this. Okay, so so now I have it. Uh, I didn't. I pass it, and I said, "Okay, I'm gonna get it." Okay, off screen uh, of of uh, this uh, this video, but no, I actually just find it here. So this thing will be about seventy eight point six five four. This is in kilowatt. I hope, and this guy's this guy's twenty five point three kilowatts. Therefore, the cup will give me three point eleven. This is the cup for the refrigerator. Okay, so these guys actually, what they were asking me at B. So this is B. Good, let's do one more. The one more is they are asking me, okay, so D, let's just find this cup if this guy was a heat pump. So a little bit of theory, okay? This is a refrigerator the refrigerator, you will place a machine, okay? You will feed it with work for the compressor. You will take out heat from a lower reservoir temperature, which is basically something which is um, a um, something cold, okay? So you want to, to keep this uh, reservoir cold, that's the inside of your, your refrigerator. TH is where you're throwing out the heat in the condenser. Okay, so basically this is the environment. This is the environment and this is, I don't know, this is the food, let me just put it here. This is the food. So this is how our refrigerator can be schematically put or placed in a, in a thermodynamic sense, okay? And now here comes a heat pump. A heat pump, let me just use again HP because of heat pump, not because of horsepower. You will feed it with uh, work for the compressor you will take out heat for the, oh my God, you're gonna do the same thing. Yeah, I'm gonna do actually do the same thing here. And you will say, well, there is not a difference between a heat pump and a refrigerator. And I can tell you, yeah, th there is a difference. The basic difference is that a heat pump is placed most of the times below a home, okay? Or, uh, you know, a, a house in order to heat it what you're actually doing with this machine is you're taking heat out of the snow, maybe, or the path, or the pavement that is a little bit cold, or the ground or the air, whatever you want to call it, okay, that it's really cold. You're taking heat out of that, and you are placing heat inside your home so that it's warm there. That's the basic idea. It's a refrigerator. If you want to put a, a heat pump at, at home, okay, so turn around, turn backwards your refrigerator. Just place it, place uh, the piping that it's at the back of the refrigerator pointing at the living room or at the, you know, at the kitchen or at your bedroom or whatever you want to call it. And therefore you will feel the warm. Maybe it's not very, you know, very useful. But that's the basic idea of a heat pump that you can warm something or heat something by taking out heat from some other stuff. Okay. So in this sense, you're not using food. You are taking heat from the environment, from, from the snow or the cold ground below your home, okay? And you are placing this, this is, I don't know, this is the interior or the inside or the interior of a home, of a place that you want to keep warm. That's the basic idea of a heat pump. Therefore, therefore, okay, so I'm gonna go here. The cup for a heat pump 
it's no longer QL divided by WC. Look at this. What is would be the useful effect? The useful effect for a heat pump is not QL, it's QH. That's the basic idea. That's what you want in a heat pump. And the resource is the same one. If you don't feed it, okay, your compressor won't move. Okay, so with this idea in mind, you need to get this guy first. You don't know it. So QH is a condenser. So I'm going to rush myself here. Okay, well, why? Why should I rush it? So here you have to remember, this is the entrance of the condenser. It goes this way, which is three, okay? This is where you are taking the QL, okay? This is the one that you're looking for. I'm sorry, QH. And therefore, you're going to establish the first law, zero equals to M3H3, okay? M3H3, <clears throat> no, backwards. So I'm going to place it around. Sorry for the confusion. Zero equals to M minus M3H3 plus M2H2 because the two is going in, three is going out, plus QH. So I'm going to put QH all the way around here. So QH is going to be equals to M2, um, uh, no, M3H3 because this was, was negative. Now this one is positive minus M2H2. So this is just M. H3 minus H2. Therefore, QH, if you put all data, you have everything you need in order to put that, it's around 13, yeah, 103.94 kilowatts. It's a lot of heat going out. A lot of heat going out. Okay. So with that, you will just, okay, let me just erase this. And the cup, the cup for the heat pump, it's gonna be 103.94 divided by the 25.3. And this guy is actually 4.11, oh, okay? And this is actually more efficient. Why? Well, because QH, it's higher than QL. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, besides, it's just the way that this thing is defined. So with that, we're done with this example. Take care, guys.